One of the most advanced features of G4P is the ability to create secondary windows. In this guide we're going to look at how to use GUI Builder to create windows and add controls to them. A window can be added to a sketch in the same way as any other control. Simply click on the first button in the toolbar. If we look in controls view, we can see that we now have two windows, main window and window 1. If we look in the property grid, there are a vast range of properties that we can edit. The last four properties define the location and size of the window. I'm going to change the window startup position. We can also change the renderer for this window, and it doesn't have to be the same as the main window. The main window is Java 2D. Let's change this one to P3D. The action on close property determines what happens if we attempt to close this window by clicking on the window's close icon. The default option is keep open, in other words, ignore clicks on the close icon. The second option is close window, which as the name suggests, simply closes the window. The third and final option, exit app, closes all of the windows associated with the sketch, then stops the sketch. The first property simply controls the scale used to display this window in GUI Builder's form view. It has no effect when the sketch is run. Next is the variable name that will be used in the source code. We'll leave it as window1. This property determines the title text for our window, so let's change it. These properties specify the names we use for a number of callback methods. The draw method will contain the code responsible for what appears in the window display. These methods must be specified if you want the window to respond to mouse and key events. If the window is only being used to hold other G4P controls, then these are not needed. You are rarely likely to want the pre and post methods, but they are included for advanced users. Finally, the onclose method specifies the method to be executed just before the window closes. So let's add all the handlers. So let's look at the code generated by GUI Builder. In the GUI tab at the bottom, we have the variable declaration for our window. Above that, the create GUI method and the code used to create the window and add the method handlers. These should not be changed in this editor. At the top, we have the handler methods. Let's change the window background to dark red and then fill most of it with a lighter red rectangle. Anything we can do in the sketch's main draw method we can do here. We simply prefix it with the name of the gwin applet parameter followed by a full stop. In this case app c dot. All of these methods can access global variables declared in the main sketch, but if you are creating multiple windows then this can result in a huge number of global variables, causing the source code to become messy and confusing. In G4P, the GWinData class provides a way to associate data directly with a specific window. So in our methods, the second parameter holds the data for this window. To see how to implement this feature, look at the simple Windows example that comes with the G4P library. The other methods are similar, but the mouse and key handlers have a third parameter holding the appropriate event. Finally, we have the close method, which has a single parameter for the window being closed. So let's go back to GUI Builder and add some controls to our sketch. The actual controls don't matter. All I want to demonstrate is that we can have controls in both the main window and any secondary window. So let's see what our sketch looks like. So in the main window we have our floating panel with our joystick or stick control. Here we have our knob and in our secondary window we have 
text field and a password field. And this is being displayed in a P3D renderer. So that's it for this guide. I hope you found it helpful. Bye.